children lost, ensnared by a witch's binding spell. Jessaline, the awakened soul, yearns to escape and find a new home. Dare you join her and explore more? of the Easter Bunny and we're going to be talking about some Easter Bunny scary stories because not all people's encounters with the Easter Bunny have been pleasant. Some are very creepy. So without further ado, let's get into the history and the origins of the Easter Bunny. One theory of the Easter Bunny's origins is that it stemmed from early pagan celebrations. They would celebrate the springtime renewal of life that was represented by the goddess of dawn and fertility. Her name was Astara and in most of her paintings and depictions, she is seen with a rabbit or a bunch of eggs. So because this happened in the spring around Easter, the two may have merged together. The earliest mention of an Easter bunny in history was actually in the 1600s. It was in German writings and they actually called the Easter bunny Osterhaus. I'm so bad at pronouncing, I'm so sorry. And it's said that this bunny would lay colorful eggs to children who were good. So this is sort of where the Easter bunny began. And then in the 1800s, that's when they started making chocolate Easter bunnies. Now, a lot of people say that the Easter bunny is an Arctic hare. He has very tall ears and white fur that serves as natural camouflage in the snow. But if spring has come early, however, he may have a brown coat. He also occasionally wears clothes like a vest and bow tie in orange. He typically carries a basket filled with colorful eggs, candy, and other treats to dole out to children. So just like Santa, he rewards good behavior to kids. Giving kids what they want most, candy and chocolate. So I know back when I was a kid, my tradition was that my parents would tell my sister and I that the Easter Bunny only comes when we're fast asleep. So we would go to bed and when we woke up in the morning, there would be this trail of colorful tiny little chocolate eggs that would go from our bed all the way down the hall, all the way down the stairs, into the kitchen, and waiting for us would be this like Easter basket filled with gifts and chocolates. But that's like our fond memories of Easter and the Easter Bunny. And everyone's is totally different, so comment your or Easter traditions down below. But because we talked about the happy Easter origins, now we're gonna move on to the creepier stuff. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. The first story is called The Ghost Easter Bunny. There's this true story about this little girl who would tell her parents that she was always seeing the ghost of the Easter Bunny, and this would happen to her every single year about a week before Easter. Each night for about seven days leading up to Easter, she would be in her bed at night with a lights off and her door would start to creak open and she would see this ghostly silhouette of what looked like a rabbit appear on her floor and it would sort of hover over her floor and go around her bed almost as if it was searching for something. It would do this for about five minutes and then it would slowly leave back through the door. It never bothered her, it never came up to her, it never really scared her. It was just very confusing and she had no idea why it was happening and obviously her parents didn't believe her but it definitely did spook the mother because she posted about this on Facebook and all of her Facebook friends agreed that it was very very eerie and she kind of felt bad for her kid because her kid would cry seeing the ghost Easter Bunny. So this little girl became afraid of Easter instead of excited for it. I don't know if this is like a sleep paralysis thing or what's going on but I definitely would have been terrified as a kid seeing a ghost version of the Easter Bunny. And speaking of ghosts let's move on to a paranormal 
paranormal game because like I said before, if something exists, there's a paranormal game for it. Now, surprising enough, this game isn't actually played on Easter. It's meant to be played at night on March 31st, basically right before April begins. This game is supposed to prepare you for the Easter Bunny to come. Now, this paranormal game has nothing to do with Easter or Easter traditions because I realize that's kind of like you shouldn't have evil associated with Easter. This is just to do with like the bunny tradition. Now, this legend is very similar to Krampus. It really reminds me of that because we all know Krampus looks like an evil version of Santa Claus and comes a few weeks before Christmas to steal little children who have been bad. Well, in the same way, there's supposedly a dark version of the Easter bunny that comes a few weeks before Easter. And this creepy bunny lures kids away with candy. Now, he is said to wander around the night of March 31st. So the game goes that at midnight, you can make him appear if you create a trail of chocolates that goes from your front door to your bedroom. And you're supposed to count the exact amount of chocolates that you put onto the ground. Once the trail is made, you have to hide in your bedroom and apparently this dark bunny spirit comes between 12 o'clock and 12.01 a.m. So for that entire minute, you have to hide and listen because apparently this bunny is supposed to come and follow your chocolate trail and eat some of them. So when the minute is up, you go back into your hallway and count how many chocolates are left and if any are missing, it means he was there. We have a story called Follow the White Rabbit. This story is about a girl whose grandparents had a big farm when she was growing up, and all of the grandkids would help out there over the summer when they were out of school. And anytime they saw a rabbit, they were supposed to grab it so that it didn't eat any of the vegetables. So this girl was about 12 years old at the time, and one day she saw a white rabbit in the beans eating all of them. She did not want her grandfather to see it because he usually grabbed them. Sometimes it was not a good end for them. So she tried tried to chase it off instead. She ended up following it into the bushes and for whatever reason, she just kept following it into the woods. She ran after it for a while until she found what was clearly an old creepy barn ruin. Now barn ruins were pretty normal to see in areas like the country that they were in. So she decided to go inside it. It was weirdly kept up really well with antique tools in great shape and also fresh hay. So she started to worry that maybe she had wandered into her neighbor's property. So when she got back, she asked her grandfather about it. And he said that there weren't any abandoned barns for miles and he had no idea what she was talking about. So he followed her out there and she was not able to find it ever again. So the rest of her life, it just drove her crazy as to where that old creepy barn went. Now there's another story called The Endless Hole and it also involves a white rabbit. There was this other story about a girl who lived out in the country. One day she was out feeding eating her horses when she saw a white rabbit staring at her in the distance. It had these bright red eyes that almost glowed even in the daylight and she felt compelled to follow it. But as she approached it, it started to run away. But because she was so curious, she continued to chase it. It took her to a giant hole in the ground and quickly scurried inside. The hole was probably six feet wide and was so dark that she had no idea how deep it could have gone. But what she'll never forget is as she stood there, there, she heard a deep whispering voice coming from the hole that said, Would you like to come in? We're waiting for you. She was so startled that she ran back home to tell her father. And when she brought him back to the exact spot she found it, it was nowhere to be seen. Imagine hearing a creepy voice coming from a hole in the ground. No, thank you. But this story kind of reminds me of like the rabbit hole to Wonderland, right? I guess you should just never follow white rabbits. <laughs> So we're gonna be talking about the history of Easter egg hunts and going into some creepy pastas and really scary things about it as usual. So let's first start with the history. Every Easter, children across the country rush around their homes and gardens searching for chocolate eggs. For some families, Easter just isn't Easter without the annual Easter hunt. But how did this all become a thing? Like who started it? And before I continue, comment down below, did you ever do Easter hunts as a kid? Do you still do them? Because 
I definitely did and I loved them. And it got very competitive when I was a kid. Like I'd play this with my cousins and there was definitely a lot of crying involved by the end of it. <laughs> because there was always that one person who was just way faster and got all of the eggs and all of us were left with like two. Also, anyone else find eggs lying around the house like five years later? There's always that one egg that no one ever finds that you find like years later covered in bugs and mold. Although its roots are totally clear, it's widely believed that egg hunts date back to the 1700s when the Dutch believed in an egg laying hare called Oster Haas. This hare would run around laying eggs in the grass and children were encouraged to build nests for it to lay in and to search for the eggs it left behind. Now Oster Haas eventually became the Easter Bunny and the Easter Bunny isn't really known for its egg laying capabilities but it does have the tradition of carrying around an Easter basket filled with chocolate eggs. Now Queen Victoria actually helped popularized Easter egg hunts. As a child she enjoyed egg hunts at Kensington Palace that her mother would organize for her and on Sunday April 7th of 1833 the 14 year old Princess Victoria actually wrote this quote in her diary it says mama did some pretty painted and ornamented eggs and we looked for them. So that just proves that all the way back in the 1800s they were doing Easter egg hunts. Victoria and Albert continued this German tradition hiding eggs for their own children to find and still even in her adult years and older years she would still write in her journal about these egg hunts. For example here's a direct quote from her from 1869 it says after breakfast the children as usual on this day looked for Easter eggs. So of course because the Queen was doing it everybody wanted to do it. Okay so we're gonna start with a chocolate Easter egg creepypasta that stems from Korea and this story takes place at midnight after a long day of Easter activities. A girl was sitting at the table in her living room trying to do some studying and her little brother was behind her playing with some toys. The girl was eating out of her basket of chocolate Easter eggs that she had found during the egg hunt earlier in the day and she had been savoring them all day long eating them slowly but her brother basically ate all of his within an hour like he just gobbled them up super quickly. Can I have a chocolate egg? Asked her little brother behind her and she replied with no because she wanted them all to herself. She found them, she caught them, they were all hers. Please, can I have a chocolate egg? He continued to whine behind her. But once again, she told him no and tried to ignore him. She continued eating her chocolate eggs, but her brother kept pestering her to give him one. So eventually she grew tired of the constant distraction and annoyance. So she grabbed her half finished basket of candy and tossed it over her shoulder to her brother. And she basically told it to just have the rest as long as he left her alone. She heard the rustling noise behind her as her little brother ran over to grab the egg but then there was silence for a couple minutes and then she heard a voice say there's only two left can I eat one? The girl sighed and said yes once again, and she just wished that he would stop bugging her. But then she heard some really strange slobbering sounds and munching sounds coming from behind her. Now there's only one left, said the voice behind her. But she still assumed that it was her brother, and she told him to stop pestering her and to just eat the last one already. But then she turned around and to her horror, she saw this tall, hideous monster, and it had just finished chewing on the remains of her little brother and he was walking towards her with sharp teeth open and that's how the story ends apparently it's trying to teach kids to just share their food or the creepy Easter monster is gonna get you so it seems like the first two questions were actually her little brother but after she kept saying no this creepy creature stepped in and when he said there's only two left can I eat one he was referring to her and her little brother he wanted to eat them the whole time does that make sense all right then we have the next story. It's called Never Go Egg Hunting in the Woods. And honestly, I think this is a creepypasta, but it could be true because it does seem like it could be a little bit realistic. There's a story about a mother and her two kids that lived in a neighborhood beside a huge forest. And every year around Easter, she reminded them never to go Easter hunting in the woods. When they were really little, she never told them exactly why. But when they got older, she sat them both down and told them the story about what happened to her 25 years 
five years earlier. The mother said that when she was young, she went egg hunting in that same forest with a group of three of her friends. They were all happily running through the grass with their baskets, picking up eggs whenever they saw one, and without realizing it, they went farther and farther into the forest until they could barely see the sun above the trees. Then they were startled to see this strange figure standing far off in the distance, just like waving at them slowly. It was holding an Easter basket in the other hand, and they watched as this figure reached into his basket and placed another chocolate egg onto the forest floor and then skipped away. She knew something was wrong right away and tried to stop her friends as they ran towards this mysterious egg trail that this really strange person was leaving for them. She was smart enough to not go with them and decided to run back to her parents to tell them what happened. But when they got to the forest, all they found were their baskets lying in the dirt and they were never seen again. And since then, every couple years, kids will see a trail of Easter eggs leading into the forest that they are told not to follow. And the mother says that sometimes even now in her mid thirties, when she looks out her bedroom window to the forest, she can still see him there waving at her, placing an egg onto the ground, encouraging her to follow him. So yeah, that is that story. It sounds like it could be realistic because maybe there is a creepy person in the forest trying to like lure kids in there with Easter eggs. So if you ever see like an Easter egg trail leading into a dark forest, don't follow it. I feel like you should know that though. So let's talk about mini eggs. If you guys love mini eggs or know what they are, comment down below because I do want to see which countries around the world actually have these. Cadbury mini eggs are a milk chocolate product created and produced by Cadbury. Introduced in 1967, the egg is solid milk chocolate encased in a thin coating of hard candy shell molded to resemble a miniature egg. Now let me just tell you, these things are absolutely addicting. And they actually used to only come out with them once a year for Easter. But because people loved them so much and their sales were so high whenever they came out, they decided to put them out all year round, or at least that's how it is in Canada. I can literally find them any time of year. Halloween, I want Easter eggs, they're there. Now I did post a tweet asking my followers if they know what mini eggs are, and a lot of people in the States say they also have something called robin eggs, which I have personally never heard about, but they do look very similar. In 1854, Queen Victoria gave Cadbury a royal warrant, which anointed it the queen Queen's Chocolate Company of Choice. I feel like the Queen always comes up in my videos whenever I'm talking about something. She was always somehow associated with it, which I love. We love royal things. So in 1875, they came out with their first version of mini eggs, but they called these draggies. And these were made with dark chocolate and it sort of had like a sugary coating around it. But the mini eggs that we know and love didn't come out until 1967. Now, if you travel outside of Canada or the US, apparently mini eggs look very different in the UK. They are apparently dotted with speckles to look more realistically egg-like, which I think is actually really cool, but also I feel like it would freak me out because I don't want to like trick my brain into thinking I'm eating like real eggs, you know? Okay, let's get into the danger because I was really shocked when doing research about this. I was so surprised when I found out that mini eggs should not be given to young children. According to St. John's Ambulance, they could actually be a choking hazard to children under four years old and and they gave out the warning for several brands in 2020. Apparently, if your child really wants to eat one, you have to cut it in half, which obviously avoids it getting lodged in your child's throat. But you wouldn't believe how many stories I came across online about kids who have choked and died while eating these. Like, it is insane. So please be careful. It is so crazy how something could be so fun and so loved, but also so dangerous. All right, so let's jump to a creepypasta. This one is literally just called Candy. And this creepy story has a bunch of different versions surrounding it. So I'm gonna tell you the one I found first because it does mention mini eggs, which obviously is the whole point of this video. It's about a little girl named Cindy who had collected a ton of Easter candy from her school a few days before Easter. And it was mainly mini eggs, which were her ultimate favorite. So when she got home, she placed her bags and bags of mini eggs on her kitchen counter. So she would be able to eat it over the weekend and for Easter. And so that her dog wouldn't be able to reach it because obviously dogs and chocolate, they do not mix. That night while her mother was sleeping, she was suddenly woken up by Cindy standing in her doorway. She could only see the creepy silhouette of her daughter just standing there looking at her and she was whispering, Mom, Mom. 
over and over again. So obviously trying to wake up her mother. When her mother finally sat up and asked what the heck was going on, Cindy said, Mom, the Easter Bunny is eating my candy. The mother just laughed for a moment and told her daughter that the Easter Bunny gives out candy. He doesn't eat it. And then she told her daughter to just go back to bed and fall asleep. But Cindy still looked terrified standing there and said in an even more serious tone, Mom, the Easter Bunny is eating candy. Please come help. So her mother just shook her head and explained to her again that the Easter Bunny would never eat her candy because it's his job to give out the candy to little kids to make them happy, right? That's his whole thing with Easter. But she also reminded Cindy that it wasn't quite Easter yet. They were still a couple days away, so it would be impossible for the Easter Bunny to even be there yet. And once again, she told her daughter to go to sleep. So Cindy sighed and walked out of the room with defeat, and her mother just sort of chuckled again before falling asleep because she thought that her daughter had a very creative imagination. Out in the hallway, the little girl stood for a while, staring at the Easter Bunny eating candy. Then she sighed and said to him, Mommy says that I should just go back to bed. Then the Easter Bunny turned around and smiled at her and said, Good idea, child. Turn around and don't look back. Then he tossed a shiny metal pendant at Cindy and she picked it up and cried when she saw that it was a dog tag inscribed with the name Candy. Guys, he ate her dog as a snack! And then there was her bag of mini eggs just sitting there intact on the counter because he was never eating the mini eggs. He was eating candy or dog. I'm sorry, I know that's like a lot. And don't worry, it's just a story. It's just fiction. It's just a creepy pasta. <laughs> but like, why? Every time I look up like Easter or Easter bunny creepypastas online, it's always the Easter bunny being like a monster, like eating things that he shouldn't be. This reminds me of the other video that I just did about like the Easter bunny eating the poor girl's brother. Oh my goodness. But don't worry if you're one of my like younger viewers and you're freaking out the Easter Bunny is not like that He is friendly. He gives out candy. He would never do that there is a terrifying urban legend from Virginia that has been haunting locals for decades. It's known as the tale of the Bunny Man or the story of the Bunny Man Bridge. The bridge is more of a single lane tunnel with a railroad overpass running on top of it. And there are so many different versions of this infamous tale because it seems to change depending on who tells it. The story takes on the characteristics of a game of telephone with new details added every time it's told. There was actually a student from the University of Maryland who was researching this legend and they said there are over 50 different variations of this bunny man legend which is insane. So let's start with the true story that inspired this very creepy legend. Back in 1970 a man was driving down a road in Fairfax County when someone in a white rabbit suit leapt out of the bushes in front of his car and shouted that he was trespassing. The bunny then hurled a hatchet through the car window before running off into the bushes again. And this was actually reported in the newspapers in the 70s. So this was real. This actually happened. It was all over the news. People were freaked out by it. Then a week later, this mysterious bunny man was seen again with an axe, chopping away at the roof support beams of a new structure that was being built by the road. And by the time the police was called and they got there, he was already gone. So this bunny man seems very protective over this road, doesn't want any new buildings buildings on it, doesn't want people there. And then a third attack happened when the bunny man, once again armed with an ax, chopped away at the roof of a car, terrifying those inside. And thankfully, all of these people that were in these scenarios were unharmed, they got away. But obviously, it still really terrified the town to see all of these things in the newspaper. These three instances from the 70s are allegedly real, and that is why people started to create legends behind who this bunny man could be, since he was never caught. So let's talk about the creepier legends that stemmed from these newspaper articles. One version of the urban legend shares that a mental patient escaped from a local asylum and found refuge in the woods around the bridge in Clifton, Virginia. He had apparently been put away after he took the lives of his wife and daughter, and he remained in hiding by that bridge and lived on wild rabbits to stay alive, leaving their half-eaten remains by the bridge. And then one year on 
Halloween, some children were hanging out near the bridge around midnight and they were confronted by the man. And he attacked them and hung their bodies over the bridge by the dead rabbits, which is awful. This story is definitely very gruesome. Another version says a bus carrying convicts from a nearby insane asylum crashed and one of the prisoners escaped into the woods of Clifton, Virginia. And during a search of the area, police found carcasses of dead rabbits hanging from the trees around the train overpass, and then they were eventually able to locate the suspect. They found the man wearing rabbit pelts, and the man tried to run away from police, and as they were chasing him, he was hit by an oncoming train on the bridge. His spirit is said to haunt that location to this day, and some have said his ghost may even appear at midnight on Halloween. It is said that at the stroke of midnight on Halloween, a killer in a white rabbit suit awaits. Lore has it, if you speak his name three times, he'll appear. Bunny man, bunny man, bunny man. But the legend says, don't expect to survive. It says he will attack you and will leave your body dangling from the bridge. True story or not, the town of Clifton, Virginia has embraced the tale of the bunny man and visitors are even able to purchase like t-shirts with the bunny man on it, different souvenirs that has his image on it. Some people have also said that the story of Bunny Man Bridge may have provided inspiration for the bunny man character Frank in the 2001 movie Donnie Darko. The movie was directed by Richard Kelly who grew up in Virginia so it's possible he may have heard the story. But yeah this is really terrifying if I was ever in the area I would definitely go see it. Let's get into the video. The first missing persons case is of Joy Regal. She disappeared on March 18th of 1935 and she was only two years old at the time. Two-year-old Joy lived on a rural farm with her parents outside of Garden City, Kansas. Now on this particular day of March 18th, there was this massive dust storm. A dust storm is a wall of dust and debris that is blown into an area by strong winds from thunderstorms. The wall of dust created by a dust storm can be miles long and several thousand feet high. So there's literally warnings in your area if a dust storm is coming. People are pretty afraid of them. And Joy was with her little dog at the time of the storm and she ended up getting lost in the wall of dust after she had wandered away from the house. Now this case does have a happy ending but also a very strange one. She was found four hours later, five miles away from her house. Her dog was found right beside her and it made police wonder. How was a two-year-old able to stay upright while carrying her dog five miles away from her house in a horrible windy dust storm? I mean, remember guys, she was only two years old. Even full-grown adults struggle to stay upright in a massive dust storm. Now, this story baffles people to this day, and it's startling how many missing persons cases involve a child getting lost with their dog. All right, this next case is about Edward Jeffries. He went missing on March March 30th of 1933 and he was eight years old at the time. Eight-year-old Edward was living at his aunt's home in New South Wales, Australia. His father had passed away and his mother was currently living in Sydney. On March 3rd, Edward's aunt asked him to round up the cattle that had wandered away from the ranch. Now he apparently had done this job before and he did get lost occasionally, but he had always made it home before dark. They had never had to go out and look for him. Well, on this particular day, however, he did not come home. So his aunt notified her neighbors for assistance and they got in contact with the constable who rounded up 90 people in the area to start looking for him. They searched for five straight days and night and on one of those days they found a small hut where they believed Edward might have slept in for a little while. Now the weather was incredibly cold during this search and many people didn't think that Edward would have been able to survive all that time out in the cold by himself. Now the sad part about this case is that Edward was never ever found. And people wonder like how far could he have gone? Why has nobody seen him or even found his body? So this case will always be a mystery as well. The next case is for Kenneth Crandall. He went missing on March 13th of 1916 and he was only two and a half years old at the time. It's actually crazy how many cases I've talked about where a two-year-old is involved. There are so many. It just seems like a common age for a kid to go missing and I have no idea why. The Crandalls lived on a 
ranch in Montana, and on March 13th, after the family had finished dinner, Kenneth went outside to play. And then nearly two hours after dinner, his mother went outside to look for him, and she was unable to find him. She also realized that his dog, who was a collie, was gone as well. So his parents searched and searched for several hours, until they felt like they needed some assistance from the sheriff. The sheriff organized a search party and said he was really concerned about Razor Creek that was nearby their house. They were worried that maybe the boy had fallen into the water and was pulled away by the current. Hundreds of locals were looking for this boy and on the third day something very strange happened. Kenneth's collie returned home extremely hungry and after they fed the dog it started to cry as if it wanted them to follow it. They followed the dog for six miles until it led them to the boy's body. It was evident that the dog had left him to go and look for help. Now it was assumed the boy died from hunger and exposure and it also amazed the sheriff that he had walked for eight miles by himself and once again this was a two-year-old. Now the weird part about this case is that the sheriff believed the boy had died within 24 hours that he had been missing. Which means he couldn't have died from hunger because he literally got lost right after he had a huge dinner. So someone could survive on that for up to a week. So people really wonder how did he actually die and remember this was back in 1916. They didn't have advanced investigation techniques. It was really hard for them to tell back then what really happened, but still extremely tragic. And the last story is about Faye Crawford. She went missing on March 26th of 1962 and she was only three years old. Now her disappearance occurred in Washington County and on the night of March 26th, one of the nine Crawford children had gotten ill. So the sick one-year-old baby, Faye, and her parents were all driven to the doctor's office by their uncle. And then after seeing a physician, they were all driven back to the uncle's house. When they arrived, they saw that Faye was sleeping soundly in the back seat. So they decided to leave her and let her nap while they all went inside for just a couple minutes. They just wanted to go into the home to say hello and then they would be going back out to the car. After a few minutes, they returned to their car and found that Faye was gone. It was 10 p.m. at the time and they decided to immediately call their local sheriff. Law enforcement arrived within half an hour and they were shocked when they went and examined the car in which the child was left. Both the inside door handles of the car were broken. So the only way to get out of the car from the inside was to roll down the window, reach over and open the door from the outside. And they could not see how a three-year-old girl could do that. So the question was, how did she get out of the car with no door handles, with no windows down? They searched all through the night and into the morning for Faye. And she was eventually found wandering barefoot through the woods. She had scratches all over her face, all over her arms, all over her legs. So she was admitted to the hospital for observation. Now this is where things get a little strange. She apparently told law enforcement a very bizarre story about what happened to her. And they were so intrigued by this story that they continued investigating her case even after she was found. So what were they looking for? Now what happened to her was actually kept private and the media never found out. So I guess we'll never truly know exactly what happened to her. The only people that know are her family and law enforcement. Which was strange because they had made this such a public case in the media while they were looking for her and once they found her, it was radio silence. Okay, so if you've read any of the Alice in Wonderland books or you've seen any of the movies, you basically know what the whole premise is about. I feel like even if you haven't seen any Alice in Wonderland movies, you know basically what happens to her. Alice falls asleep, ends up in Wonderland, eats and drinks various things that she shouldn't, she meets a bunch of bizarre characters, she faces off with the Queen of Hearts, and then she eventually finds her way back to her cat by the end of the movie. Now the Alice in Wonderland movie that came out in 1933 was 76 minutes long and it was created for a very young audience and it has all of the most famous characters like the White Rabbit, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, the Mad Hatter, the March Hare. The only thing is they do not look like how you would imagine them to. You know in most of the Alice in Wonderland movies they have the characters looking strange but still kid friendly and in this particular movie they were all created to be these monstrous things like every single character 
character was designed to terrify you. There was even this one scene in the movie where the Queen of Hearts is having this giant feast and literally the food on their plates come alive and become these like creepy food beasts and like run around, they have these faces. It is so weird. And a lot of people say that the other really creepy thing about this movie is that the actors are obviously wearing these giant weird costumes and sometimes if the mouths of these creatures open really wide, you can see the actor's face like buried beneath the costume and it looks like humans are trapped inside these creepy monsters. Like it literally looks like people are needing to be freed. <laughs> because kids were so afraid to see this movie, it was a flop at the box office, which really isn't surprising. And then it was also soon overshadowed by other fantasy films that became classics like The Wizard of Oz. And so like I said, this Alice in Wonderland movie soon became super forgotten. Like I even had never heard about this film until now, until I was doing research for like creepy old black and white movies. And it's so bizarre how these filmmakers didn't hold back at all in trying to make Wonderland look as sinister and uninviting as possible. And as much as like this whole thing creeps me out, I'm also really intrigued by it. Like a lot of people nowadays will go and try to watch this movie just because of how strange and unsettling it is. And they recently put this movie on DVD and Blu-ray, so guess what I bought? I bought this movie to watch on the vlog channel. <laughs> it's actually coming in like two days, so I'm going to react to it on my other channel called V Vlogs. I am afraid. Now there are a lot of adults now who look back on their childhood and remember seeing this movie and they weren't sure if it was like a dream or not, like if this movie was actually real. A lot of adults say it was like a fever dream when they were a child. And they also say that a lot of these creepy characters stayed with them for years, like they could not stop thinking about them. I also read a bunch of other reviews from adults who watched this movie as a kid and said it was cursed. There was this one viewer who decided to watch it at 3 a.m. with his friends at a sleepover and apparently the power went out in his house mid-movie, but somehow the only light that stayed on in their house was their TV screen and it was frozen on a scene of one of the creepy characters faces and it stayed like that all night. Like they went and got their parents, they couldn't figure out how to turn the TV off, they didn't understand why the rest of the power in their house was out. It was just so weird. So yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna watch that because I am literally crazy. Now this wasn't the only really creepy Alice in Wonderland film that ever came out. There was one that came out in 1903. It was a silent film and it was the very first Alice in Wonderland that was ever created. It came out only a few years after the writer Lewis Carell died and because film technology wasn't great back then, obviously it was literally the turn of the century. They were only able to make this into a 12 minute film. But at the time it was the longest film ever produced in Britain and honestly just watching these scenes is so creepy guys. It's completely silent and to explain a scene they have to put the words up on the screen. Obviously no one's talking. There's only like music playing behind all the scenes and like honestly watching it it reminds me of like an American horror story intro scene. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, while I was doing research for this video, I found out some really intriguing facts about Alice in Wonderland, and I found out that the writer wasn't going to call it Alice in Wonderland at first. He actually had a bunch of other titles. Like he was gonna call it Alice's Adventures Underground, and then once that was rejected, he decided on Alice's Hour in Elfland. That was rejected. Another idea was Alice Among the Fairies, and then finally he came up with Alice in Wonderland, which I feel like is just the best one. Now, any of these adaptations like books and movies were actually banned in some countries when they first came out and the reason for them being banned was because animals should not use human language. Really? I don't know why that was such a big deal. I don't know if they thought it was like teaching kids like wrong things, you know, they're not factual things. But yeah, in some countries animals were not supposed to be able to talk. <laughs> So we both went to the dollar store and we picked out five Easter items each. So you guys know the drill. We're gonna go through, pick one by one, show the item, and then that's oh, yeah. Please. Okay, can I start because I have bunny ears and I want to put them on for the video. Well, you just spoiled it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just really wanted to wear these because they're pretty and they go with the theme. But we'll try them on Bean first. Oh, Bean. You can't even see. No, just the root of the bunny ears. But bend down a little bit. There you go, see? My body doesn't move this way. <laughs> there we go. See? 
I thought, I thought they'd be floppier, so I could just... No, they're just in one place. I have very pointy ears, like, okay? They have wires in them. I know. Real life bunnies should have wires in their ears just oh. to keep it up. No, naturally, don't put them in there. She's like, that sounds painful. No, don't put them in there, it's just naturally. It adds to structure and potentially aerodynamics. Okay, your thing. Okay, I have cooler bunny ears. Oh my god. Came with glasses. Of course. They're not gonna fit your head. Like, they're not gonna fit your head. See, that's quitter talk. <laughs> Can't you push them back? It's on my nose. Oh. It's kind of cute. This is fogging up so fast. This yeah. is not a good design, having the nose be enclosed in. Yeah. Every time I breathe, it just gets worse. Double bunny inception. It won't even stay on you my mean face. double bunny redundancy. What does that mean? Redu you don't know what redundancy means? No. Time to get learned. It's just redundancy is repeating the same thing, even if it's like saying synonyms together, like the redundancy department of redundancy. There's no sense saying it twice. It's redundant. Okay, Dr. Seuss. Okay, this next item is really special, okay? It's called hatching egg. Didn't we just do this? No, I think, oh wait. Oh, you had to put it in water? Ha, you got bamboozled. No, I thought it was one of those things that you like crack with your fingers. Well, you can. Can you? Well. Do you wanna try? Sure, let's just do it. <laughs> We're gonna force this one to be born into the world. Darn, I didn't think it was a water thing. You should read it first. Yeah. This is a water thing. It's just like the unicorn we did on Ty's channel. He's gonna smash it. Three, two. I thought it was gonna be a louder noise. Show them the pieces. Okay, he looks like a straight up dude. <laughs> he looks like a dude. It looks like the, do you remember the animation of Chicken Little they did? Cause it looks like a person chicken. It looks like a dude. Look at all the leftover, like that's what he did to it. Like it looks like it's candy. It looks like I should eat it, but it probably tastes like paint. Like, kids, don't bother putting your stuff in water. Smash it! Wow, we really sped up the process there. Yeah, we could put them in water and just watch them grow again. <laughs> no. I saw this and thought, what the heck? It's a bunny. It's a bunny ball launcher. The face of it looks like it's really excited. Just go. Woo! 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 Every YouTuber's thumbnail? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but it advertises it as a ball launcher, so I guess you're supposed to just jam one of these it. into it. It's really not liking it. Wow, you really have to stuff that in there. Yeah, there we go. You gotta suffocate it. No, oh, it seems to be made for it. Boop. Whoa, that was pretty good. Yeah, it is. Get in there. My entertainment is not done. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. There's a hole in it somewhere. You bro already broke it? Can I do the last one? There you go. This is so weird. Go. That's crazy. That actually launches like faster than I thought. Mm -hmm. But now all the balls are lost in the endless wasteland that is the studio. What? Them be fighting words, right? Hey, who's gonna have to clean up this? Me! He called my studio a wasteland. You guys don't see what we see. I see stuff from two Christmases ago. All right, let's <laughs> stop now. <laughs> they don't need to know. Explosive chicks. That sounds horribly violent. It does, it does. So what color do you want? Oh, we got a newborn, a newborn hatching chick. We got a happy bunny and we got a happy chick. I like how there's the newborn and then there's the one that's had a little bit of a chance to live a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought it said 18 plus. <laughs> so we're like, wow, what does that mean? <gasps> it seems it has no children. Children zero to three. Oh. <laughs> no children? No children. Yes. Okay, I like me my blue raspberry. All right, I'll have the green one. This is like fun dip with a lollipop. It tastes dusty. Yes, it does. There we go, look at that. Oh, I'm scared, is it gonna be sour? Oh, I can feel it in my brain. Guys, her head's just gonna explode now. It's gonna destroy my insides. Either that or the toilet. Ah! He's taking the whole day! Ty, you're gonna hurt yourself! I'm ready for lip up. <laughs> wow. I think I just inhaled one. Your lungs are gonna blow up now. My lungs, yeah. It's gonna collapse again, Jess. No! What does this lollipop even taste like? Dust. 
Tastes like gone. All right, your turn. Everybody knows that usually around Easter, especially little kids, you get that chick that you kind of wind up and it bounces around. I found the granddaddy of them. That's scary. That's really scary. All right. There's just like so much strength in this. It scares me. No. <laughs> it just wants a kiss. Just. Are you kissing other chicks? On camera too. Next video, he kissed another chick. And the whole video is just you with that. <laughs> so I'll make a gif of that, please. <laughs> this is absolutely no use to probably either of us, but I found these and I thought they were adorable. It's notepads with bunny tails on them. Wouldn't the bunny tail just be gone after the first time you use it? Oh, I don't know. That would suck. Imagine the first page is the bunny tail. And you just take the bunny tail off. There's just like a little bum hole on it. Oh, no, no. You open it. So it's like a little notebook. Look at that. That's the cutest thing. Look, and it's like there's all the page. Oh, it kind of worries me that they're stuck together. I just ripped it. Yes. Ah. Wow. So I saw this and thought it was absolutely hilarious. You're like out of the frame. Come here. I'm trying to run away. I know a lot of people, especially on Easter, they do like a little Easter egg hunt. Yeah. So I figured it'd be really funny to have some Easter eggs. Sorry, some assembly required. Imagine about to play hip hop. People probably have done that. Probably. I thought it would be really funny to have Easter eggs that look like they were screaming for their lives. Don't eat me! I think they're scared about being broken apart because people will usually fill these things with candy, and like leave them on their lawn. Oh yeah! Yeah. And then you're just like, You tear them I apart see? and they're yeah. screaming. We should give these to like your, your younger cousins. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I'll show you Easter! <laughs> just put like a little screaming box on the inside so when you open it up you just hear, ah! Okay, last thing of mine. It's really cute, all right? Ready? Wait. You're so proud of yourself, aren't you? Shake, 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 Sonora. It's it's a candy thing. And it comes with candy, we have to try one. It's like a Pez dispenser, but hard yeah, to they, get into. But they kind of look like Pez. No. And like a smaller version. This is like a vial. Kukaracha. Kind of scary. Kukaracha? Nah, 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 nah. Are you sure these are candy? Or <laughs> they're just like things you shake? They are candy. At least I hope so. Do they taste like candy? I don't taste anything. Or from they're just like little shakers. Whoops. When I was younger, I always got like the Lego sets that said, you know, five to 10 years. Yeah. But I ate all the pieces in 20 minutes. All right, last thing from Ty. So keeping up with the Easter spirit, everybody usually gets their giant chocolate sculptures. And I thought, what's more Eastery than a goalie? We live in Canada, eh? <laughs> Why is this Easter? Because we live in Canada. I just like the fact though that on a piece of candy it has to say solid real milk chocolate. Not fake. I'm not joking. It Look. says real. It says solid real milk chocolate as opposed to solid fake milk chocolate. You mean this isn't a real goalie? It would be really concerning if it was a real goalie because first of all you found a really tiny goalie. Yeah. And second you just covered them in like burning hot chocolate. Okay guys that's all the stuff we found at the dollar store. If you want us to continue continue doing these videos every holiday, let us know. But it's this book, and now we have all kinds of stuff that we don't need. It's everywhere. Why is there a box of toilet paper? We brought it to the cottage. But why is it here? It's not at the cottage. We, it's in the studio. I know. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Just in case of emergencies. I don't pee in here if that's what you're insinuating. Thanks for doing this video with me, and if you want to see more of us, go to Ty's channel, V Vlogs, and yeah. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll see you in our next video. Okay, bye! See you guys. In an enchanted realm, an oddity stirs, beckoning the curious. Meet Jessaline, once ensnared, now awakened, waiting to be yours.